Karen has given me permission to record her back scrubber. Now, she did use sugar and cream in her pattern. I don't have that nearby. I'll have to order it online. But I did have the peaches and cream. I found it really tough going, even on the bulking machine. I have some of the kitchen cotton, and I tried it on this. It doesn't really want to work. Now, as I told a few people, when it comes to cotton yarn, it's best if you wax it. The Brother Machines has a little thing on the yarn mast head at the, you know, the top there to put a little piece of wax on there. So if you have a Brother Machine, put the wax on and you should have no problem. For this machine, I don't have a way of doing it. I'm going to have to rewind this up, whether on a cone or a cake. But run the yarn through some wax or over a wax candle in order for it to knit properly. Now you can use a candle. I think you want to have it white or clear. I don't think you want to have a color one. Unless you have color yarn, then you could use that as well. So just for the video, I'm going to use some acrylic yarn because that always works on these machines. So first of all, she has it with 11 stitches. You want to have an odd number of stitches. Because I'm using acrylic and the stitch is going to be smaller, I'm using Tension Doll 6. I cast it on, let's see, 10, 15 stitches. But I know that 26 here is my center one. Now this is another good thing that you could use the right side or left side of your bed. You don't have to be right in the center and most of the time you do start from the center zero and that sponge always gets used a lot faster than the outside edge. I probably could have gone over a little bit more but I don't think it would have done the camera that well. So uh, after you cast on the 11 stitches you knit 10 rows and then you're going to take the center stitch in my case 26 and just move it over one making sure that needle stays in the work position if you have a bond machine it may be better if you put the needle out to hold position now for me to show this I have to set my left uh, Russell lever so that it will not knit that and then push that back into forward working position and making sure that latch is open. So I knit another 10 rows and I take the center stitch and move it one over. Now I could go left, right, left, right, left, right. I can go all left, I can go all right. It's really up to you. There's no rule on how you have to do this. So in her pattern, she states to do 80 rows of doing this, change the color, uh, and do another 80 rows. I'm just going to do the one color. Uh, I am sure with this here, you could just let that second color right up the edge. Because in the end, you'll see what I have to do to make it the way she has it. So I'm going to work up the rest of this until row 160 and then bind off. Of course, transferring that center stitch every tenth row. So you're going to do your favorite bind off. Because recently I was talking with somebody with their standard gauge machine of doing the gate peg bind off, I want to show that. Now, for the other machines that don't have the gate pegs here, the little prongs that are sticking up, you can use your needles instead. But for the gate peg, you're going to bring the yarn to the right of the gate peg, right of the end needle. Well, that's if you end on the right. If you end on the left, you just start on the left is all. You take your latch tool, put it in that first hook. Now, see, I'm holding the yarn, but I'm also bringing that needle back to pull the latch tool through. And it came off that gate peg. I grab the yarn and pull it through that stitch. I go to the next one, I pull the yarn up tight, again, pull it through that stitch, grab the yarn, 
and pull it through. And once you get going, this gets pretty easy. Now for those that do not have the gate pad, let's see. I need to have the yarn over the needle that was just done. And then I'm going to take, <laughs> if my yarn wouldn't get all confused here. Okay, so I'm going to take the next needle, put my latch tool in it, pull it back. Now I go above the needle. I bring that needle back to hold in position. I put the latch tool to the left of that needle that was just bound off. I grab the next one, put the latch tool in it, bring it back, and just continue doing that. Now I do find it a lot easier myself to just do the gate peg bind off. It's a little awkward here because I'm normally right in front of my work, but with only 15 stitches it won't take that long to get this done. Oop. Well, that's the good thing about this is you could always grab that stitch, get that hook in that other stitch that was on the needle. Well, for the bulky and mid-gauge, probably, maybe not so much for the standard. And last, just go to the left of that, and I could cut the yarn. I don't have my scissors right here. Now... If you did it over the needles, just pull those needles back. If you did it on the gate peg, just pull it off. And there's your bind off. So now, you're going to take one end of this and bring it to the other end. Uh, and then just take and push it through that first hole. And just pull it through. Be easier if I was this way. Now I do like to make sure that it stays that same way and it's not twisted. But anyways, you just pull it right through until it makes that little knot. You're going to take the other end again, bring it through the next hole, pull that through, and do that all the way down. Now, granted, the acrylic may not make a good back scrubber, but I'm going to try it when I'm done. So just finish this going all the way down to the end. So you end up with this piece like that, and it almost looks like hearts. Let me zoom in. So you could get a better look at this. Pretty neat, huh? So now I'm going to take one end and fold it over on itself. For the 11 stitches, I could just fold it half and half. But because I want to do an I cord, I'm going to fold this in thirds. Then I'm going to grab all three layers. And this time I'm going to be on the opposite side of my bed. <laughs> so that I'm not using the other sponge on, I mean the sponge on the other side all the time. And then hang three or four stitches. Well, probably be best if I put the stitches out. And that's only because this machine will knit the stitches back from this. 
Uh, I hope it's going to do it with three layers. But if not, I can hand knit the first two rows just to make sure it goes <laughs> the way it should. So I guess I gotta close that latch on my own. And actually what's gonna happen is the second row, when you come back, well, I'm gonna set it up so from left to right it's not gonna knit. To make an eye cord on the Studio Singer type machines, I put my cam to slip. I move one side lever, depending on what side you want, forward. The other one I leave back. And that's all I need to do is just go back and forth now and I can knit up an eye cord. For the Brother Machines, you have a part button, you two part buttons there. You're going to push in one of them, whether you want it to knit from right to left or left to right. It doesn't really matter. Just hook it on, set it up to slip, and work it away. Now I need to do 96 rows. Um, now because my counter is over on the right hand side instead of the left, I'm just going to have to count in my head on this. But as you see, the yarn is free going from left to right and it knitted from right to left. I also put the tension dial down to three so that this will be a little tighter stitch. Then when you're done, you're going to take the beginning part of this and grab a couple stitches so that you could just basically make a handle out of this. Also, I took my machine off of slip, uh, set it to stockinette, put my right side lever uh, back, which it didn't matter in this case. I'm going to put my tension dial up to, actually, I'll go all the way up to 10. And now I'm just going to latch tool bind off. Being only four stitches, it's not really that critical. And then cut the yarn. Now, I probably should have left more yarn on this last tail here. Because what I want to do is I want to sew it up. And I'm just going to go back and forth, make a running stitch to close that up. But I'm going to need, leave enough at the end so I have a handle there or to get my hand through the hole. So now I just need to do that on the other side. Sew those up and I'm all done. Actually weaving any yarn tails that are hanging <laughs> and then I'm all done. Here's one that I made up on the HK100 machine. It's still acrylic but see I've got two different colors there. Then here's one that's actually finished with the loop on the end, and I had my handle. But this is a looser stitch, even though I had it at tension dial 6 or 7, I think, on the HK100. But still, you know, I'll get to try it out and see how the acrylic works, but I'm going to have to wax my cotton yarn and actually make one out of that or get the sugar and cream yarn and see how that works. For machines that do not have the capability of doing these, the slip stitch, uh, or you know, a little bit more work to do by putting the needles out to hold, why not just knit every row? It's going to curl in on itself. And it sort of looks like the eye cord. So I'm going to finish up this side. I'm going to get the orange and do this. And I'll have myself three, well, 
they could not only be back scrubbers, but you could use these as dog leashes. Um, Karen also mentioned about as a headband. <laughs> put beads. If you get beads at the right area there, um, put a veil on it. This could be nice for a bride that wants to make her own veil. Um, I'm sure there's many other things that you could use this for. So, depending on the yarn, depending on the machine, <clears throat> how many stitches you're using. Um, now, if you're using a standard gauge, you probably want to do more rows than the 10. Uh, you'll get to figure it out. Usually, when it goes from bulky to standard, you double everything up. So, you would have the 22 stitches and do 20 rows for each one. Um, but it's really up to you. Work it up. See if you like it. Add or subtract rows of stitches. This is something that's not uh, written in stone that you have to have it a certain way. <clears throat>